where do we stand now with dream research? I mean, there have been so many ideas over the years. You've had Freud with his ideas and other people who say, oh, that's wrong. Dreams are completely random and meaningless. W what are dreams? Well, you know, I think that the, the kind of work that I do involves not the study of human dreams, but of animal dreams. And you might ask, animal dreams, what does that mean? I mean, how, do you, how, how, do you, how can you tell when an animal is dreaming? You can't wake them up and, you know, give them a dream notebook or ask them what they dreamed, you know, what they dreamt about. You can, but they won't really answer. <laughs> <laughs> so you can ask, how could you actually studle, study animal dreams? And the answer is to bypass <laughs> the mechanisms of dream report can go directly to the source, and that is to record the activity of brain cells while animals are awake and having experience, and then record the activity of the same cells while animals are sleeping, and ask, essentially, compare the patterns. Do the patterns that we see when animals are moving through the world, experiencing the world, in the world, do they reappear in some form during sleep? So it's a direct measure of both the structure of brain activity, and you know, Niels mentioned that there are these there are sleep states in which the structure of activity seems to be very different. That's how we define these sleep states. Deep sleep, with these slow oscillations, much of the brain seems to, you know, to be moving in lockstep, which is distinct from wakefulness, when many parts of the brain are being driven based upon what you're doing, what you're seeing, in other words, the brain, when you're awake, is responding to the external world. The brain during sleep seems to be responding so to some internal world. So how can we get at this internal world? You mentioned Freud and the idea that maybe we have you know, different levels, layers, different types of brain activity that correspond to different kinds of cognition. That there is the conscious, the unconscious, those, uh, the, you know, the deep hidden parts of the brain. That, that might influence behavior, but we can't really articulate, we can't talk about. They, uh, th they're available to us, but how would we actually measure them? So again, the strategy is using an animal model that has it actually as its benefit the inability to tell us or to report what they're dreaming. So the rats, don't, us the rats don't wake up in the morning and say, you would not believe the <laughs> you dream would not I had. <laughs> And if they could, you know, the way we would interpret that is that, well, that might be what you <laughs> thought you dreamt about, but uh -huh. I want to know what you actually dreamt about.